Today I'm going to show you how you can remove the engine and transmission from your car. Now the engine on this G35 is situated longitudinally so in order to get it out we need to remove the front end of the vehicle that includes the bumper cover and grille as well as the radiator support, radiator and condenser in order to get better access to the engine. Now I'm going to remove the bumper on the front of the vehicle so I'm just going to use my brother's toothbrush here and pry up in some of these clips and remove them. Next I'm going to remove the headlights and remove it. No screws attached and remove the headlight from this side. Now up along the top of the rad support we've got two bolts to remove here. A couple of accessories over here. Your cooling hose as well as your mechanical fan. We've got the air box as well as two more bolts on this side. Now the main bolts that hold the bumper rebar and rad support together are these two 12 millimeter bolts and a 10 mil bolt over here. And the same thing down below and on the other side. Now the radiator has these clips that hold it onto the rad support. You rotate them and just pop them out. I'm also going to unclip all the wiring harnesses from all the horns, as well as the front fan and the airbag sensor. Don't forget the hood latch. And now with everything free, we should be able to pull off the rad support. And this is what we got with the rad support removed. So pretty much the next step in getting the front end off is to remove the condenser and the radiator. So we're going to have to drain the coolant as well as disconnect these AC lines. Next up we need to remove this AC condenser connection. Now normally you would take this little o-ring here and it's got tabs on it, squeeze it up and you could disconnect the line. But these tabs are broken. So the tool that I'm going to be using is called my angle grinder and I'm just going to cut it off. You want to make sure that the system is not charged when you do that. Now the only thing holding this radiator on is the upper and lower radiator hose. So we're just going to go ahead and remove the clamps. And we'll just work this hose slowly off of the engine. Alright, so with all the rad hoses disconnected, I can remove the radiator and condenser assembly. So in and behind the radiator here, we have two more hoses that need to be disconnected to the transmission. And we can remove the radiator from the vehicle. We'll start by removing this air box here, a couple of clips, pull off the intake tube. And then I'm going to disconnect this intake tube. Now on the air intake we've also got a connection for the EVAP system as well as a hose here that routes around the firewall to the brake booster and we've got a coolant hose down at the bottom here. Next I'm going to remove all 10 millimeter bolts that hold the top of this intake plenum to the manifold. Next up I'm going to remove a couple of 10 millimeter bolts around the circumference as well as this plate in the middle here. Now I'm going to remove the air intake collector. So here we have the connection for the fuel line that comes in from the fuel tank. And hopefully fuel doesn't spill all over me. There we go. So this is what we have left with the front end removed. We just need to remove the fan, a couple of reservoirs and some wiring to clear things up in the engine bay before removal. Next I'm going to remove these 10 millimeter bolts that hold the fan blade. There we go. Now instead of disconnecting the wiring harness from the engine side, I'm going to come under the dash here and trace it over to the ECU where I'm going to disconnect this one over here and this one over here and fish it back through into the battery compartment. And now with the wiring harness free, I can just fish that up. So we're going to start removing all of the plastic shroud on top of the battery. And then I'm going to unbolt the battery itself. I'm going to the battery. Down inside of here, I'm just going to pull back these little doors here that hold the wiring harness on. And there's three plugs over here to be disconnected and then the entire wiring harness can be moved off to the engine. Next up we're going to remove the positive battery terminal that goes down to the starter and the alternator and then we can pull the positive line back over the engine. So this here is the AC compressor. Next we need to remove these two 10 millimeter nuts to get these lines off of the compressor. And remove the AC lines. Next up I'm going to remove the two ground wires that go to the chassis. One over here and one at the bottom here. Next I'll remove the line for the power steering reservoir and then I'm going to remove this giant 24 millimeter bolt here. Crack that free. And that's pretty much all the stuff we need to disconnect from the top half of the engine. The next stage is to get underneath and to disconnect things from the transmission. So here we are underneath the transmission pan. We're going to drain that out of fluid. We've got this cross brace here that holds the transmission to the body. We've got the tail shaft that brings out a universal joint here. And if you follow the drive shaft to the back here, it bolts up to this other part. So we're going to disconnect it from there and drop it out. And then finally, we've got to disconnect the shift linkage over here. Now before you remove the drive shaft, we need to remove the exhaust system because that has to clear to drop down. So there's one exhaust mount that I'm going to disconnect here. All right, so I'm just going to rotate the drive shaft over here. All right, so if you take a crowbar and you pry it in between here, you'll be able to get the drive shaft down. There we go. 
Some fluid might leak out though. So here we are underneath where the transmission and the engine join up together. If you look to the left, there's a flange over here that connects the header to the catalytic converter. And there's another flange over here on the right for the other bank that we're going to remove. Spray that down with some PV blaster. Mm. Ooh, that's rusted on there, buddy. I'm actually going to leave them on just for now because my exhaust is broken at the back anyways and we'll see how this comes out. So with the drive shaft out of the way we have a clear view of the transmission cross member. We're first going to remove that bolt over there which holds the bushing to the transmission and then we're going to remove these two 14 millimeter bolts on either side of the transmission cross brace. I've got a jack stand under here supporting the transmission just in case it drops down a little bit. Alright so because I can't get this brace off of this bushing it's kind of stuck I'm just going to slide a 14 millimeter socket in here and undo the two bolts on either side of this bushing mount that mounts the transmission. I'm just going to remove the shifter linkage from the front of the transmission over here. Now if we take a closer look at how the engine is connected to the subframe, inside here we have the right side engine mount, which mounts to the subframe over here, and then that subframe has a control arm that goes out to the wheel. Now the same thing is repeated over on the other side here, we have this control arm that's mounted to the subframe, and then up and inside of there, there's another engine mount. There's two ways to get the engine out, the first of which is disconnecting this engine mount with one bolt down at the bottom inside of here and then lifting it out with a crane or you can actually disconnect the subframe over here and drop the engine down and then slide it out. Now this step is optional, next step I'm going to remove the wheel so I can start disassembling the suspension. If you've got an engine crane you can just lift the engine right out but I'm going to be dropping it down. Next I'm going to remove the pinch bolt that holds the steering shaft to the steering rack. So next up we need to remove this lower transverse link from the frame here, so I'm going to start by removing the shock. Now I'm going to unbolt the stabilizer link. Next up I'm going to remove this big bolt that holds it onto the frame. I'm going to remove the sway bar from the frame itself. Next up I'm going to remove this tie rod nut. And then we'll just free that tire rod from the knuckle. And I'm going to slowly release the transmission and let it hang off of the engine mounts only. And the last piece is to remove these two 19 millimeter nuts that hold this lower subframe on. And we've also got this bolt inside of here to remove for the engine mount. Alright, so this here's the setup. I've got a jack stand underneath that subframe over there. And we have a dolly that will sit underneath the transmission when I lower this down. First up, we're going to remove the 17 millimeter nut that holds the engine mount on. And now I'm going to remove the subframe bolt. Alright, so with everything disconnected, I'm going to go ahead and slowly drop my jack down, which will release the engine down on the jack itself. Alright, so here's what we got so far. I got the transmission half rested onto the dolly. Then I've got the engine here resting on the jack with the subframe dropped. Over here, the engine is dropped out of the bay. The only two things is I've got the steering still connected, it's proving a little difficult to remove and I've got the exhaust down at the bottom there touching my jack stand preventing me from pulling this whole assembly out of the vehicle. I'm just going to beat the crap out of the steering shaft here until it comes out. So you can see the engine and the transmission is now pulled out of the car and this is what we got left over here. The next thing we need to do is start disconnecting the transmission and the exhaust so we can get this engine on an engine stand. Now I need to get this subframe out from the engine. So to do that I got the engine on jack stands through the engine headers over here. I've got my original jack that I pulled out the engine with and I've got a secondary jack that I'm going to jack the engine up over the engine mount studs and then I can hopefully pull out this subframe. And then now I can just remove the whole subframe with the power steering rack. So now I'm going to go ahead and remove all of the exhaust header bolts, they're 14 millimeter. Now way underneath the engine here there's this inspection cover that we need to remove. There's a 10 millimeter bolt holding it on and that will give us access to unbolt the flywheel from the engine. Next up I'm going to rotate the engine from the crank over here until the bolt down there lines up on the flywheel. Alright so here's what we got so far. The engine and transmission are out. I have unbolted the flywheel, so the next thing to do is to unbolt the bell housing over here to separate the engine from the transmission. There's a couple of bolts that go around the perimeter, but before we do that I need to take care of the wiring harness. And boy does this really make a mess, I sure hope my dad's not looking right now. I'm just going to remove these transmission cooling lines here. Plug in those. Now I'm going to start removing the bell housing bolts, so underneath the inspection port. 
There's two 14 millimeter bolts. And I'm gonna remove this 17 millimeter bolt near the starter. So now I'm just gonna remove five 17 millimeter bolts that go around the top of the bell housing. And once the torque converter is popped off, there's a couple of 14 millimeter bolts that hold a flex plate to the crankshaft that I'm gonna remove next. Next, I need to bolt this stand here for the engine stand to these bell housing bolts over here. So this here is the setup. I've got the engine stand mount over here bolted to the bell housing. I've got a seat belt that's wrapped around the engine over here and is bolted over to either one of these two 17 millimeter bolts and this bracket I've got. So I'm just gonna lift it up from here. So my brother over there kind of broke the crane. So we're gonna have to figure something else out to get this engine stand to stand upright. All right, so we got two jack stands and two jacks. And that's pretty much how to remove an engine and a transmission from an Infiniti G35. Obviously you'd want to use an engine crane if you don't want to damage anything, but this engine is for educational purposes only. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification icon if you want to see more videos just like this one. I'm just going to use some sawdust here to sap up some of that fluid. 